Welcome to section 4, data preparation and manipulation with pandas. So in this section, we are going to look at creating pandas data frames, setting and resetting index of a data frame, reading in data files, summarizing data, and grouping data. Pandas package provides the necessary tools to work on tabular data, similar to SQL. In tabular data, rows are observations and the columns represent variables. The variables can be of different types. With pandas, one can index, subset, select, filter rows and columns, clean data, prepare data for visualization and predictive modeling, summarize data, in short, perform all kinds of data wrangling. So first we'll learn about creating data frames in pandas. We will learn how to create data frames and what the meaning of index is and how to set and reset index. So let's get started. First, I will show how this is done using a dictionary. So let's create a dictionary with a key name and then let's provide the values of this key. So remember, dictionaries are key value pairs. So we can say Sophia, John, it will be a very small data frame. Jennifer, Petgar, Patrick. So this will be the name column later on, okay? So let's create another column called gender and then open a list. So let's say F, M, F, M, and M, okay? So that's our second column, will be second column. And then the third column is country, so which country they are from. And let's make that another list. So let's say Bulgaria, USA, USA, England. By the way, it doesn't mean anything but Netherlands. Okay. And then the last one is H. So key and then the values in a list. So 23, 24, 46, 13, and 72. Okay. So if you run this, if we look at data, so data is a dictionary and it looks like this, okay? Now we'll say import pandas and spd. So we will call the functions from pandas library using pd instead of writing the whole name like pandas, okay? So we have called the pandas library. Now we will say in just one function like this. So there's the pd data frame function. And as input, we are going to give our dictionary. And if we run this, you see we have a tabular format data so these are the columns the column names are age country gender and name it has five rows and each row represents an observation as you can see and this is the index column so index 0 1 2 3 4 index is like the row name so these are the column names right age country gender name and zero to four is our row names or the index of the data frame. So having defined what an index is, we can reach the values. So let me show you this first. DF columns, we haven't saved this into DF. So data frame for short is generally done as DF. That's what I use here. And I save this into that variable called DF. So if I run now DF columns, this will show the column names of our data frame. So that's index, country, gender, and name. Now, if I say df.index, that will show the index of the data frame. So that's zero to five with a step of one because it's integers like this, okay? It's a range index. Now, we can also use another column as an index. So for example, if you wanted to use the name column as the index, we can do that. And for that, we'll use df.setIndex function or method. So df set index, if we say, then we will give the column that we want to use as the new index. We'll say name, because that's the column name, right? It's the name. And put a comma here. And then we'll say, so let me add a few empty lines here. So we are back in the middle. So if you say drop is equal to true, what this means is this. Once it makes this column as our new index, if you say drop true, then it will get rid of this from the data frame itself. If not, it will have this column both in the data frame, like here in its original position, it will stay there and it will also be in the index. But we generally don't want that. So we'll say drop true. And there's this in place argument. If you say this, 
So what in place is doing is it will save the variable back into itself. So, you know, the change is made in place basically. So that's why I didn't need to save it back to a variable. So as you can see, the changes are shown here. We have our new index. It's the name of our data frame, but we don't see that name column in the data frame anymore. It's dropped from there and the changes are done in place. So the changes are permanent, basically. In other words, we can say that. Now, if we want to get back to its original state, what we can do is reset index. And then we can say, for example, in place false in this case, because we just want to see the results, but not save it back to its own variable. We can say in place is false. And let's say drop is equal to false. So what's this doing in this case? So it's a resetting index meaning it will get back to its integer form 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then this column, if you say drop equals false, it's so let me show you what drop equals true does. So as you can see, drop equals true drops this column, the index column, you won't see it anymore, because it resets the index, and then it also drops the current index. But if you say false, this won't happen, this index column will be put back into the data frame. Okay, as you see here, the name column is shown here as the first column. Okay, so these are some important details that you have to pay attention to. These parameters, what they mean, what they do are important things. And this is what an index is. And this is how to set and reset an index. And later on, we will see what the importance of this index is in subsetting and indexing of the data frame.